Their bones will wet my blade. Another body for the gutter. This blade's my favorite. Enjoy the taste of steel. Hey guys, welcome to a new guy video. Today I will show you guys how to play the Assassin Talon. The ability sequence is W max first because it's your primary trading and wave clearing tool, Q second because it adds more damage to your combos and then E last which is what makes Talon so good at roaming. His ultimate is his best assassination ability so always put points into this whenever possible. Ok guys, getting into the landing phase as Talon you want to start with your W so that is your wave clearing ability and that is also what you use to poke with. So it is an ability that can damage the opponent twice, once when you use it and then when it returns. When it returns that's where it deals the most damage. So what's really important about this champion is his passive because a lot of the damage is in this passive here so you can stack uh, three times using the abilities and then you prog it by auto attacking the opponent. So your rake will damage people twice, your W, so you can get two stacks there and then your Q counts as a stack as well. And then in order to proc the passer, you need to auto attack them first. So Talon, weak level 1, but level 2 he's really strong because that's why he can really start proccing the passive. Right now Annie is staying far back because she knows Talon is really dangerous at this point here. But if you're playing against opponents who don't really respect this, then you can quite often look for kills level 2 already. And your Q guys also has some sustain built in when you kill minions with it. Um, remember that if you use Q in a melee range then it will work as an auto attack reset and it will also crit. And if you use it from a distance then it will be a leap. Okay, as so a Mumu gang coming in here. Luckily we have our E guys so we can jump our walls. And that makes this champion really difficult to gank. And it also makes him really, really strong for roaming. Um, his C is actually the reason he is one of the absolute best Romas in the game. Just have to recall here and then get some items and then back to lane because uh, if I stayed in lane after being so low HP then he would just gag me again. Oh, Camille is coming, Echo needs to watch out. Also when you get back to lane guys, uh, use your E to jump over the walls like this here. Uh, then you get back to lane a little bit faster. Echo did get first blood, so that's nice, but uh, Camilla is sitting on double pops, so not very fun for Riven, I guess. Anyways, the goals on this champion, guys, um, pretty much just FK roam all the time. You just want to be as annoying as possible and really look to roam all game. Now, early game, a bit difficult. You need a couple items first, of course, but uh, as, you, as soon as you get items, then you just FK roam. Probably going to gank bot lane a lot this game here. Um, Caitlyn, pretty easy target to gank as well. Just need to watch out for the Thresh Lantern. It's really important that you constantly keep an eye on the minimap here guys and always keep in mind who's low HP and how it's going for their lane. Camille is a bit difficult to gank because he's very mob- Oh, there's another Mumu gang coming in. It's very interesting. He should not be able to gank us here. You can just jump over the walls, so that's fine. Now Camille is a bit difficult to gain guys, she is pretty mobile so I'll not be looking to roam uh, top that often, but bot lane is pretty easy uh, most of your games because the ADC is really squishy, so you can often just one shot them when you get level 6. You can try to poke people with that W right there, it doesn't deal a lot of damage in the early stages but uh, if you can damage the opponent twice with it, then you can look for a Q engage. The thing is, Annie is a pretty annoying matchup. Okay. 
I'm just gonna trade kills right here. So I proc my passive really fast. And that means that that bleed damage will end up uh, taking any out. So we trade a one for one. That's actually pretty worth it. I think I did end up losing a wave here, but we also making sure that Amumu wastes a lot of time. I don't know why he's camping mid though. It looks like he's at the top. Needs to warn our jungler. It's very difficult to set a talent behind. Um, you won't really have high CS numbers on this champion either because as soon as you get your items then you just look to FK room. You don't really farm a lot so if you look at any talent main then you will always see that they have really low CS per minute. Because they just don't care, they just show the waves and then they just peace out to other lanes. That's also what we will be doing here. We almost still 6 guys so that's when our burst becomes available. There we go. And we have another tool um, we can use to proc the passive with, or get stacks with the passive. But it gives you a lot of movement speed, you also become invisible so you can use that to kite around with and it's really good for assassinating people as well. So we can look for a dive in the bottom lane here. The bottom lane is really low HP so that's why I'm hit a bot right now. See if we can hit Thresh here. Or oh, really nice tornado by Janna, so that's pretty free. I used that all to last hit and will, I really want the kill. We can actually go again here. This is what you want to be doing on Talon guys, just roam all the time. Yeah, I just tank the tower here and then I back off. Then Ash got the kill, so this is super good. This is basically what you do on Talon every single game. You don't care about high CS numbers at all, you just have K roam. Set, set the enemy laners behind. We also have Relentless Hunter in the uh, Domination Tree and that basically means that we will have a lot of out of combat movement speed so as soon as we push our mid then we can just keep roaming uh, at super high speed so really easy to get around the map. I don't really have my ultimate up, the thing is Annie is a really annoying matchup, she has a, e a shield on her E and she has point and click stun so they can also burst us down from 100 to 0. But we also need to be careful here. A really good thing to do against the enemy though is that you left click on a champion. Then on the left side of the screen you can see how many stacks she has on a passive. So you know when it's about to come up. That way you cannot uh, get baited. Otherwise she can always look to kill you. Echo is doing dragon so... I'm really going to stay there. It's probably risky though because I think the bot lane might come. Okay, she all did. I had to back off here. She also used the ignite. Yeah, bot lane saw him doing the dragon. I need to headbutt. Um, I'm really low HP but I do have my ultimate up so I just have to be patient here. Any might also come in. Oh, a moon is also coming. Wow. Okay, we got the drakes. That's fine. Now we just need to see if we can get out. Right, and use the stun, so now I can go in here, guys. Use that crit Q, so if you use the melee range, then it's going to crit. And you can also use it as an auto attack reset. It's really important that you use it as an auto attack reset if you use it in melee range. So basically, auto attack, Q, and then auto attack. Like I did right here, perfect. So I got a triple kill, and we got double buffs as well, so... This is going uh, pretty good for us. An assassin. Early mid game assassin that falls off in the later stages of the game, so you really want to snowball the early stages. We need a bit more gold for the first core item, the first mythic item, so Eclipse is really, really strong on AD assassins. 
Dustblade is also really good for burst, uh, helps you get out because of the invisibility, but Eclipse just offers so much right now. Um, which is why I think it's probably getting nerfed really soon, so abuse this while you can. Uh, really strong items, the mythic items. He actually gets a lot of movement speed from that uh, shield right there. Can make it a bit difficult to hit uh, skill shots. We don't have our ultimate up just yet, 22 seconds. Yeah, so we have Gathering Storm here, so that is for the scaling a bit, so we get some extra AD. Um, if you don't care about that, then you can also go Nimbus Cloak, so you get some extra bonus movement speed when you use your summoners. That's also really good. Also another really popular option. But it did get nerfed though, the bonus movement speed you get. But I don't use it that often. I'm just pressuring Kate right here, as you can see. The moment they saw I went out of vision, they just decided to back off. And that is the kind of pressure you want to be uh, putting on the enemy bot lane. When you play roaming champions like a Talon or a Twist of Fate. Because you actually pressure people without even being there. That's basically global map pressure. Fun. Got out. Oh, okay, nice ultimate. That's really good for us though, because now she cannot kill us. Okay, he also flashed. I'm not sure what is going on, but Annie is losing her summoners and her ultimate, so... Fine, let's head top side here, see if we can get something. And now she knows we are coming. I'm just gonna take out this uh, blast cone here. Um, that way we make it harder for her Mumu. Find a uh, pass around her wards. We are pretty much in the early stages of the mid game right now because our bottom lane took down the tower. So that's why you want to snowball your carry lane, so because of the ganks we did early on, then our bot lane is doing really well right now. So that's just what you want to keep doing when you play Talon, you just snowball the carry lanes. So you put two players behind and then you put uh, your two allies ahead. Fortunately, I stepped on that trap, otherwise I could actually have killed her before that lantern, but uh, you can actually block people from uh, taking that lantern. If you have a control ward, then you can place it on top of the lantern and then they cannot click on it. A really cool thing you can do against Thresh if you um, end up playing against him. Young Camille. It scales really well, but Riven should have a pretty decent chance to uh, when they have their ultimates up because Riven has a combat ultimate and Kimmel's ultimate is more for locking people down. Anyways, we got the first core item guys, the Eclipse Steam Mythic item. You can only buy one of these each game here. Gives you a nice shield and some bonus movement speed and a lot of damage as well, so... Really good item to buy, but if you want, then you can also go for the Dust Plate. I have to go for the CDR boots here, but you can also go for the Swifties, so they give you more movement speed. CDR just feels so good right here because you have a low, much lower cooldown. And the thing is, we already have a lot of movement speed, so we have Relentless Hunter in the runes, and once we get Humus Ghost Blade, then we also have a, a lot of movement speed from there with the passive. Really nice fast combo I did here to take down any bit earlier. So you always want to look to proc this passive here because a lot of his damage is passive. So if you don't proc it, then you will struggle killing people. Okay, I'm almost coming down. We have a bottle. Okay, interesting flash. I just went in here because I saw my bottle lamps coming in. Maybe we can find a kill on this guy. We just need to kite him. Watch out for his ultimate. Walk back here, there we go, bit out his ultimate, now we can go in, hopefully Ash survives. And he is dead, nice.
have the Oracle Lens, that is something you want to be buying on Romas. Uh, that way you can clear out the vision while roaming. Because when people play against Talon and such, they will always ward up. Let's see if we can find Camille here. Oh, no way. <laughs> I could not auto attack her right there because uh, I got stunned and then that shield actually saved her. Because I was waiting for her to flash over the wall because that was the only escape path she could use and then... Somehow I escaped, but it's fine. Actually, I hate sitting on a lot of gold and being unable to buy anything. I'm just gonna get the pickaxe here and a longsword. Uh, I don't want to sell the control ward just yet because it gives you a lot of vision control. So if my lens is on cooldown, then my control ward is the only thing I can use to uh, deny vision. So really want to make sure I have that because on this champion guys in team fights and Skirmishes, you want to be flanking on this champion, you don't want to go in from the front line. And if you try to flank while the enemy team has some kind of vision on you, then they will just one shot you because Talon is very squishy. He has a lot of damage, but he's also very squishy. That's why it's really important that you have lens and then also some uh, control ward so you can deny the vision and then you can pull off the flanks. Double kill is not good. That was kind of obvious though that uh, Ash was going to get ganked upside, so she overextended quite a bit. I can take that down here. I waited a little bit and hoped that she would uh, use her abilities on that last minion right there, because then she would not have to stun now. You just have to keep chasing here. She has a lot of bursts, so if we can trade her abilities for mine, that's also worth it. Okay. That's pretty fine, so we got the Ignite out as well. The thing is, if she was within range right there, then I would have went for that kill, because we could still win that trade. She used the ultimate, she used the E as well, so she doesn't have anything defensive up. Take out the Tibbers here. Oh, what? One back. Oh, and he also swipes one HP, that's so unfortunate. On that moment. I don't know if he has his ultimate up though. Did he use it right early? I don't remember. Okay. Rain got the kill. That's fine. Let's go for Kate here. Okay. Let's have another flash down. So your targets in fights guys are the squishy champions. First of all you want to prioritize the carries on the enemy team. So that means Kaelin. Also if they have some kind of mage. Uh, like we're playing against any right here. But she is pretty difficult to assassinate. Um, because of a point and click CC and a shield as well, but otherwise you want to go for the carries first and if there aren't any carries then you find the uh, squishiest member on the enemy team. For example, if they had the Janna in the enemy team then we can also easily one shot her. Basically just go for anyone you can uh, delete instantly and then you back off waiting for your cooldowns and then you just repeat. Yeah, if you can jump over, if she overextends, then I'm going in here, right here. It's probably water though, because uh, my lens is on cooldown. Gonna wait around the corner here. So we want to be flanking, guys. That's why I'm not going uh, from the lane. I'm always staying the sides. Then I wait for people to be distracted. For example, when my gate is distracted with a Ruin Echo, then I can go in from the sides and then I just one shot her. I want to push this before a moment comes though. I did not take out the blast cone, so this might backfire. Okay, I should be fine. There's no way he catches me here. I'm really mobile. Looks like we are fine, so we have Camille and a movement topside here. It is recalling, so not a lot of stuff to do. We can take it out, there we go. Okay, they don't have wish in here, so we can go for any. Let's see if we can put her down. Flash salt. Alright, nice ultimate from Janna. But you can also just use your ultimate to kite people because you become invisible. So if you don't need it for burst, a lot of the time you will also be using it just to escape. 
But we got a lot of stuff out from the enemy team, so that should be fine. They can get a moon, right? Nice. We can also get... I don't think we will get Camille though, she's really mobile. We should just take the Drake here, and then we can push up for the uh, soul. The thing is, your passive also works on monsters, and even the jungle camp, so... Be sure to take those out whenever you have the chance to. The wolves and such might take a while to take out uh, um, until you have Tiamat, but um, you can actually do the buffs and things really fast because of that passive working on it. Oh, Janna, watch out. He's so done. I don't think that was worth the Camille ult though. She should much rather use it on me or Ash. As we have such huge bounties, so now we got the Yumus cosplay, so very similar to last season. But it also gives you a lot of movement speed outside of combat, so the passive of it, so... Come really fast, and that really helps you walking around the enemy jungle and looking to flank people. That's why I like to get this here, but you can also get the Edge of Night, and if you play for... Uh, the Vision Control at this point, if you play in High Elo, then people like to get uh, the Umbral Glaive. Because it lets you know whenever there's a ward, and then you just one shot the ward, so... You can have insane vision control with the Umbro Glaive, if you uh, want to play for the vision. But damage is really important. You get a lot of damage from that item, and you also get some really nice ability haste. It's really high actually, so... You can buy anything you like here. I also like to get the Edge of Night, so you get that spiel, uh, spell shield, and it's really good against something like a any because um, if she has a stun up right, then she cannot really proc it on you because that uh, shield would just uh, zoom it. Get uh, Camille here. She is mobile, but we are even more mobile. Nice. Oh, that's a bit too deep, bro. Oh, rip. Watch, I think Janna's also the. Okay, never mind, she blessed. Get the tower ash. I'm gonna try to slow them here. I can go for a Mumu. So, because we are in melee range, then I made sure to auto attack first before I use my Q. Because you get a free auto attack with the auto attack reset. Even though one auto attack doesn't sound like a lot, it really adds up over time. You always want to make sure that you use it as an auto attack reset if you use it in melee range. That won't happen very often though, because I in fights usually use it from a range, so it becomes a leap instead. See, that passive really hurts the objective, so you can do them pretty fast. That's nice. We don't have enough for the Edge of Night just yet here. We can just go ahead and get some more lethal here. We get the long sword here. I don't really care about the ruby crystal right now. We just want the damage. So we make sure that we always uh, stay ahead of the damage curve. So we can always one shot people. Powering for my uh, laners or uh, team members right here. So I'm walking from the jungle. All echoes clearing topside. So if a fight breaks out, then I will always be nearby and ready. Let's even go for a kill here. He's very tanky, but we have a lot of damage. Fuck the aftershock. Oh, that's a... Okay. Not worth it. <laughs> that's not very smart to do. Training one for one is not worth it as, as, at all because I have such a huge bounty. Bit of a waste here. My team should easily be able to win because their front line is gone, so it is fine. Nice, killing spree on Nash. Should be able to go for the end here, right? I actually think they can just go ahead and look to end the game. Any is down, Camille is down, and Mumu is coming up, but he doesn't have his ultimate because he used it on me here, so. Should be able to end the game. I 
activating the inhibitor. The Ash slow from her passive is so annoying to play against, especially if you play something immobile like an MMU. Cause she's just gonna kite you all the time and you cannot really uh, get close onto her, you also can't escape. You just have to sit there and wait to be uh, killed by her. Right, looks like this is uh, game guys, so... Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope this guide was helpful, as always, see you guys in the next video.